How many people know a little bit about MDebian or at least know what we've been doing? Yes, I know Nick does. <laughs> so I've got the, the main picture up there trying to give some idea of the flavors of MDebian that we have. The names are based we are, whoop, the names are based on squeeze, but we've kept the names and we're going to keep these names then for future um, releases alongside Debian. So grip is the, the lighter touch. We keep the binary compatibility, but we take out about 40% of the actual um, files within packages. We don't recompile the packages. We don't change them at all. It just means that you get a smaller basic system. The, yeah. Ah. Okay, that's better. So that diagram and the information you need from that is all on the MDebian website. The main thing about this talk is going to be based on a Gobi document. So if you've got a chance to load up that at gobi.debian.org, we're going to be going through some of the expectations of what people have. I'm not going to spend most of the time actually talking from here, I want to find out what people expect from MDebian, what we can do for them, what we can actually provide already, where you want us to go from here on. So if we go through just the first part of the, that's the brief summary of the of GRIP. It's a question of also what we mean by embedded. We don't just mean another smartphone, another tablet. A, a big use case for particularly MDebian Grip, and one of the main reasons for trying to push it to go into the main Debian archive is these custom embedded devices that have a single purpose. And the actual system itself is hidden away from the user. You don't, um, you don't offer the main Debian UI to the user at all. You have a completely all-inclusive system it does all the power management, it does all the suspend, and the, does the main operations the user wants, but it doesn't actually offer any of the underlying or parts of the system, which means that you can get rid of the, all the interactivity of the base system and just let it do its main job. You don't need the man pages for depackage and that sort of thing. You'll never see the command line as a user. So you get this whole idea of a, a locked-in system. It can be in our case, a communication aid. It could be a, a, a unit controlling a production line in a factory. It could be all these kinds of static systems. Question? <laughs> if you've got a question at any time, just jump in. So if someone's got the Gobi document open, if you can actually start making notes, particularly of questions that come up and the, and the answers, yeah. I just was wondering uh, if you could talk a little bit about where Embedian might be being used now. Okay. Particularly with Embedian Grip, we use it in devices like communication aids. So we have a system that just makes sure that the we can provide enough space on the device. The actual available space is very limited. If we have to actually put another chip on the board, we have to take something off. So we need to make the Debian system smaller, but still suitable for what we need to do. So, right. Are there any commercial uses of it or? That, that, is a commercial, that is a commercial product. There oh, are three commercial products already based on this in the market. Okay. There's also, um, uh, I, so working on, there's a, 
There's a pod point using MDebian. Yeah, so there's the uh, electrical car recharging systems again. That's a, a static unit. It, minimal interactivity with the user, but it's just there to make sure it runs, it keeps on going, it logs things that are going on, it keeps in, in contact with its base station, and it just manages that one little pod in combination with another one. So you have got these um, fixed installations, minimal interactivity, or, uh, full functionality, but the key point is that the software on that individual unit is binary compatible with what the developers are using back in-house to actually write the software and debug it and get all the problems out. You've got this match all the way down the stack. So I was trying to cover that in the first part of the Gobby document there. And again, in our use case, we do have a limited amount of space on the board. We want to try and pack in as much usable data that the user can actually access, rather than padding it out with the Debian system we want for our own reasons, but we want to have as many of these big voice synthesizer files that we have to use. We want to get as many of them onto the device as we can without sacrificing actual physical space on, on, the, on the circuit boards. So, GRIP has been going now since Lenny. Um, we made a parallel release with Lenny. We've made a release alongside Squeeze. Um, we are in line to make another release exactly parallel with Wheezy when Wheezy comes out. So we've got this track record going back through that. And we've managed to now persuade teams like WannaBuild, FTP Master, DSA, release team, that we have a sufficient backing within uh, the community within Debian, within the users, that we can actually push to have our packages in parallel across the main archive. It'll make it easier for commercial companies to see the packages and get used to and use them, and it'll get us more feedback about whether we're missing a few packages, whether we need to take some packages out of our selection, and all those kinds of processes. So I've been working with, particularly with FTP Master recently, trying to work out exactly what we need in DAC to allow us to have um, a parallel suite. So we'll have something like SID grip, Wheezy grip. They are binary only upload suites. And the, the DAC software will actually allow the unchanged sources to be copied across or displayed within the sources GZ as, it, as they were in the main archive. So we're running that through a DSA-managed build box. It gets notification directly from DAC. It builds the, uh, the updated version, puts it straight back into the archive. So within a very short space of time, we can process the daily churn within Unstable for seven architectures. The actual processing for GRIP is very fast. All we're doing is depackage, unpack, remove some files, depackage, repack. Um, so there's a lot that we can actually do with that. It's architecture neutral. We can run the server on any architecture. So we've got a nice, fast AMD64 box that's doing the work. Uh, we have a local mirror mounted on there, so the whole thing can just turn, churn through very quickly. And thanks to Steve, we are expecting CD image support as well. We had a, uh, we had a first go with it with Squeeze. Uh, there were a few problems we picked up, and so we are trying to build those into the uh, into the processing from then on, and we're we'll looking to make another uh, go through with the CD images with Wheezy. Now, if there's any questions on what we're trying to do with the, the integration, what it's going to mean for you as maintainers, because you're going to have your package listed now in two suites. You'll upload the SID, and within hopefully within the day, you'll have your package, uh, once it shows up on the buildies, it'll show up on our buildie, and it'll be uploaded to said grip. We'll give it a version suffix, so you can tell it's actually been changed as a binary. It'll end up with whatever your version is suffixed with EM1. But the source is completely unchanged. Your signature on the DSC will be 
uh, valid on the signature in the sources that you download from SIDGRIP. And the release team will be working on allowing the package to migrate from SIDGRIP into WheezyGRIP at the same time as it moves from SID into Wheezy. It'll be Wheezy plus one by that point. We were hoping to actually have the, uh, a lot of this integration in place by then. So what are the questions on what it means as a maintainer to have this parallel versioning in the archive? Hector? Yeah, if I have a Debian system and then I find some bugs, should I file the bugs against the Debian packages or, or currently we were using buildd.mdebian.org as a pseudo package or how far this integration is going to the full Debian? In the initial stages, particularly when we're putting into the main archive for the first, probably the, for, for the first stable release, we'll, we are working with report bug maintainers to allow that when report bug picks up that you're reporting uh, against the version that is EM1, the first place it'll go is buildemdebian.org because although policy says that no packages should misbehave if their user shared doc files are removed and their copyright file is compressed and various other changes that we make to re reduce the size of the, of the, uh, the dot .deb, then we're just being cautious, making sure that there's no knock-on effects from those. We haven't seen any knock-on effects from the packages we've been looking at, and we do have a limited selection of packages. We only take 10% of the archive currently. Will, will there be, there be uh, tools available to do these uh, procedures with uh, derivatives? If derivatives want, uh, mdebian is a derivative of a kind already, but if, if derivatives want to take our packages on to another level, that is fine. That's, that's, that's just going to work through. All right, Paul, do you, do you think there's going to be any particular call on, on that? Have you heard anybody? I haven't heard any derivatives interested in uh, this sort of thing, no. Okay. Um, so when you say that you're going to have bugs filed against mdebian, um, is there anything planned for changing that in the future? Because I think um, if mdebian is indeed going to be part of Debian, um, much as sports are part of Debian, yeah. uh, maintainers are responsible for making sure that their packages work in every situation in Debian. And if mdebian is part of Debian, then that is also part of their responsibility. So yeah. maybe in the, in the short term, that might be a good thing, but you have plans in the long term to change that? Long term, yes. Long term would be the goal to actually move. For example, one of the, um, we have a few little bugs in Dash, for one, which seems to insist that user man one exists before it runs its pre-compiled uh, pre binary maintainer script. So there are lots of little bugs like that that we have to work around currently. So we're just making sure that those kinds of things can get ironed out between a, a normal release cycle. Uh, there's a, a minor annoyance with uh, XORG. Uh, I think it's the XServerOrg core package. Uh, it expects a file to be in, exist in varlib x11. Um, and little things like that. It's just making sure that we've got time to push those through the system. But yes, the, the aim would be then you can just have uh, a quick check through the MD5 sums because you know, the, the checksums have not changed on anything you've compiled. So you can just say, well, that is the same checksum, therefore it's likely to be a, a bug in the binary itself. And then get that reassigned. Nick, did you have a... No? If I want, um, I'll just clarify as well how your packages get into mdebian grip. Core packages, yes, we have to have them in there. So anything that is priority required, important like that, the majority of those will end up being imported into mdebian grip. 
but the optional and extra packages, they'll be brought in if they are asked for, if they're not or they're ready. We're looking for packages that have some kind of embedded purpose, so we tend to go for um, the smaller implementations of a particular protocol. We tend to go for, it with the, uh, if we go for a graphical desktop, it'll be LXDE, XFCE. Uh, we'll pull in little bits from here and there uh, as people ask for them. Uh, but it'll be the, the libraries that the maintainers look after, they'll be brought in as automatic dependency checks via the the build D as we do it. So you'll, if you're maintaining a library, you may suddenly notice that it's been brought in because a, um, an application we've had in for some time has gained that dependency through some other means. So I know that the primary focus has been on trying to reduce the on-disk footprint of yep. the installed packages. Um, one of the things I've run into a couple times, again, recently, playing around with very small systems with you know, constrained RAM in particular, um, is how badly some of Debian's core tools behave in small memory, small RAM systems these days. Ha has there been any attention paid to that? Have you thought about it at all? I, I mean, obviously, um, if, you, if you can deliver a, a, a subset of all packages in Debian represented by a different packages file, you immediately relieve a lot of the pressure yes. that DPKG and apt, yes. you know, cause when you try to, to use them on a really small system. But I, I was just wondering if you or anyone else here has given much thought recently to sort of the, the, the executing memory footprint of core Debian tools important to maintain a, a dot .deb based system. The only real way you can deal with uh, memory footprint is to change the binary functionality of that particular package. Um, so that isn't going to be grip. But we are trying, once um, we get multi-arch cross-building back in place, and we can actually have a, another buildy processing these kinds of uploads on a regular basis, cross-building uh, a number of packages, then one of the things we're looking at there is dropping big dependency chains, turning off a lot of functions in core libraries. So the default in Debian is that if it works, you enable that switch in the configure options. The default with mDebian Crush will be, do we need it? Do we want it? Can we get rid of it? Uh, and will the system still work if we turn it off? So we will be turning that on its head. And that should deliver, at least in the, in the packages that have that kind of support already upstream. The difficulty with that and the bugs that will come out of that is that that particular combination of options is probably going to be only activated in our distribution. Um, most testing of these kinds of upstreams will be in the Debian model, turn everything on uh, until it breaks. The actual limited role of, oh, that's not there anymore, and getting strange breakage at a later point. I was going to say, in addition to that, it also could cause weird dependency problems if yeah. you've got something that assumes functionality. Yeah. Yeah, so what part of the, the, the crash process will have to be, right, now we've changed that little library, we've got to rebuild everything that, that re, uh, reverse depends on it and get them all to um, look for the new symbols. Yeah. One of the advantages of having a reduced um, package set uh, available in uh, GRIP um, is that the package lists become much smaller. The package lists become much smaller on device. Yeah. And so when you run out, for example, you don't find that, that uh, you run out, run out of memory just when processing them. Yeah. Um, also, if, if, if anyone's worried that um, you haven't got the full access to the repository, you can, of course, just mix it with the um, full Debian uh, suites as well. So you, you, you can have uh, that one package that hasn't actually been imported yeah. in, into GRIP. When, when you mix mDebian and Debian, there are a couple of things you want to think about. Um, mDebian version suffixes mean that you, the mDebian package is always a newer version. So, but there is a delay, particularly if you are uh, using one of the main architectures, AMD64 or i386, which maintainers upload as binaries. If you had source or only uploads, this would change. But we have to wait for the package to arrive off the buildees and onto the local mirror before we get a chance to process that, uh, that package and put it back into the archive. And then there's a wait for the next deinstall before it appears on the mirror. So you will get these 
particularly un in an unstable, you will get these uh, jumps where if you update regularly, you'll have the Debian package suddenly appearing and then uh, at the next update being replaced by the mDebian package. And that can, it can cause a bit of, of flux, particularly if it's a, develop, a, a developer machine, because then you've got a, you'll have the, the library and the dev package constantly switching over. Um, so that kind of churn is unavoidable, and if it starts affecting you in that kind of situation, you can start looking at whether you, uh, you use a testing uh, and testing grip as your base, because then the packages will migrate together and it's all done. So just a comment on the memory thing. You're presumably basically talking about the package management stuff. Um, and yeah, by far the biggest difference is just having a shorter list. Yeah. And the problem is that then if you do want something from Debian, so you put the big list back in, now you lost all the advantage again. Yes. Um, such is life. Uh, and I'm not sure, I mean, there's, there's things we can do in apt to reduce the amount of space it, storage space it takes up by gzipping lists and things, which are options you can turn. I don't know if there's any options it's got for use less memory. Because there, there was a thing about doing... It does run out of memory and complain very loudly if it does. Yeah. Uh, and that is highly um, predicated on the size of the bin package cache, or package cache.bin and, mm. and uh, SRC package. And you can turn those off, bin. so you just don't have those files. But, I don't think that's but then they generate it each time you ask, uh, exactly. you ask for his cache data, it goes back over the, yeah. all the lists. And so the short answer is no, we haven't done much, and I'm not sure offhand there's much we can do, but I've made the list sure, unless anyone's got any bright ideas. Yeah. Um, yeah, since you were not, uh, saying or mentioning about the fact that uh, it would take a while bef between the upload, then the build, and then you doing it because it has to go to mirrors, it occurs to me that that's a problem which has been solved really because build these already built before it goes to the mirrors. So why can't you be just another kind of build demon that builds out of incoming? And it's because we're not actually getting a source package to build from one build. We're not, a, we're, not a, a, we're not completely a buildee. Um, a normal buildee will be given the DSC and say, build it and upload it. That's not right. That's not true. Uh, what happens for build daemon is that they, there's a, uh, a script, quindiff, which gets the source packages, yes. which actually gets the packages, st uh, stores it into a database, and buildee checks, okay, which package is ready to build. And it can download it from... Uh, incoming from yeah. a specific archive which is only available to build demons, but there's no reason why your server wouldn't be allowed to, to download from that. Currently, F2 Master uh, aren't quite willing to give us um, download access to incoming at the moment. Uh, so oh. this would be something we, we could look at after integration if users complain a lot and say, look, this is really causing a lot of churn, then we could look at that. But currently, um, it, it isn't something that Ganif wants to give us access to directly. Um, and the other thing is that you've still got the, the delay because we have to wait for the build D to upload RMEL before we can download RMEL and put, put up RMEL EM1. Uh, but the, that, if, if that goes to the wrong side of a deinstall run, well, that's going to be that's just bad luck. Um, but the actual processing of each package, um, even a kernel package takes us um, barely more than a minute to actually unpack, repack, upload. And a lot of the time of that is actually the upload again. Uh, it's it's Blavit is a very decent box, uh, and it can do this kind of processing very easily. Paul? Just a question about the, the Gobi document here. What's this thing about enhancers? What's that about? Hans, do you want to cover that? A uh, deck basically requires that for every binary package in a suit, the um, source is also in the suit. And Enhances basically allows to upload binaries when the source is not yet there, and it will copy it from somewhere else. So when the upload uh, comes up from Blabbit, then the DAC will actually check to see whether the source package for that upload already exists in SID grip, 
and if it doesn't, it'll list it. So, because we, we're only making binary uploads, we're, and we're actually uploading. The one um, other thing I need to mention to you, your source packages might build 7, 15, th however many binary packages. Not all of the binary packages that come from your source package will show up in MW and Grip. We are very selective. We don't take every binary package you build because we need to do automatic dependency checking on all of the binaries we have. And one of the main reasons we, one of the main methods we have of keeping the MW and archive small is by blopping off particular the, um, binary packages that would otherwise bring in long dependency chains that we don't actually have a use case for in, within MDebian. So we do cherry pick the binary packages that come from a source package. That's one of the reasons why the DAC changes have to be a little bit um, carefully done to make sure that the, the source package always matches up. Um. Who decides about the packages list that is part of the package idea. selection has been done um, fairly arbitrarily by, up until now. We'll be pushing a more orthodox method of bug reports against buildemdebin.org, and then as long as as long as there's some kind of reasonable cause for having those in mdebin, then we'll put those those packages in. Uh, but it's just having a chance to make sure that they would not just randomly add in packages. Um, so again, maintainers won't be expected to make any kind of uploads themselves to MDebian grip. If you want to you just make the, uh, the bug report yourself. So in terms of, as you just said, you're not necessarily going to take all of the binary packages from no. source upload. So how do people find out which ones? I mean, where is it stored? You've obviously, you've got an override database of some sort. Tell us about that. Okay, the the list will be kept actually within DAC. Uh, it'll be part of Project B, so any developer can look it up on Rice. But there also there's also already a search engine on mdebin.org which you can look at uh, if you want to look at particular packages and see what's there. Once it's in the main archive, it'll show up in packages debian.org. Uh, we're hoping that the web team will pick up on this in due course and actually list it in the PTS. So that again, there will be a little box on one side that says these are MDebian versions of, uh, of your binaries. All those kinds of um, assistance methods, DDPO, things like that, they can all have these little listings. Um, it's a question of once the packages start arriving in the main archive, we can talk to these teams and say, look, there's your packages file. That's what's in it. How can you show that kind of information? Um, one of the things I'd like to have in particularly in packages, debian.org, is when view, uh, users view, um, when you've got squeeze, wheezy, grip in the top corner there, there'll be uh, squeeze, wheezy, and sid. You'll have wheezy, grip, and sid, grip next to it. And it, the package description on the page will be similar to experimental. It does have a little banner that says, this is the mdebian package, and it doesn't contain files that you might find in the, in the main Debian package. Uh, so something along those lines could be added to the, uh, the PDO page. So that's, that's covered GRIP fairly well. Um, CRUSH is something that we want to put back into discussion uh, once we have multi-arch in place. CRUSH is changing by binary compatibility, is changing the functional behavior of packages. It's not going into the Debian archive as a first stop. Uh, it might be once a couple of re releases in the future, we have some kind of um, uh, secondary archive arrangements, or we, uh, depending on agreement within the um, within the community uh, as a whole. But certainly, we're not expecting Crush to follow Grip just automatically. That's not going to happen. Um, it's too complex to put functional changes into the archive along those ways. But we are looking to restart development on that, and it'll be multiple architectures. The problem with the first release of Crush was it was ARM only, and no, V4 ARM at that time. So we really wanted to broaden that out and try and make Crush almost as broad as GRIP can be, if we can do it that way. So one of the things that's changed since last time we did all this a few years ago is 
um, the bootstrapping stuff in dpackage, well it's not in dpackage yet, we're still arguing about it, but the dpackage maintainer's preferred method is in fact um, profiles. So um, that might be, you know, that, that provides us with a nice integratable mechanism in Debian to be able to say, build this stuff with reduced dependencies. Yeah. So we can have an MDebian profile as well as a bootstrap stage one profile. Yeah. Uh, and that's looking to me like quite a sensible scheme. It yeah. So It's been borrowed by Lintian as well. Lintian have this kind of uh, profile matching as well. So we've got that kind of um, uh, behavior because we got, um, even with, um, with Grip, if you're building packages on Grip, you want to have a different Lintian profile because there are things that Lintian is checking for that are not going to be there. So there is, there is support for that already. Um, the similar profile support for dpackage vendor has been in uh, for quite some time now. It's been uh, available there. It needs updating. It needs um, widening. But yes, the mechanism is there to allow these kinds of uh, uh, systems to go, to, to go through and to roll it through as we this keeps cutting out. <laughs> so what do people want from Grip, from Crush, from MDebian as a whole, from our tool chains? What, can, what, what, what are we not doing uh, or what are we not doing enough of? Paul? Multi-arch cross tool chains. Bring them on. They're on their way. It's a Google Summer of Code, and yeah. there are some already available multi cross tool chains in uh, MDebian, uh, this uh, t funny mark, Tibolt, uh, yeah. uh, slash repo. Yeah. Uh, in, you can look at Tibolt's, uh, well, well you, you have, but maybe somebody, <laughs> somebody in the audience yeah. might want to have a look. Uh, just search for T-Boss blog, yeah. and he has a full explanation. You can, how can you test the tool chains and everything? Yeah, someone's putting it in. Lovely. Um, I don't remember in the past you've spoken about a reduced base system. You know, trying to get get a system that say doesn't depend on Perl or Python. Yeah, that kind of thing. That's uh, that's something we did with the first crush. Um, it depends. I'm assuming that people will want that kind of thing again. Uh, it got us down to a very small uh, base install system, but it is a lot of work to take uh, core utils out and put BusyBox in because there are a lot of main Debian maintainer scripts that expect particular um, tools to have particularly, uh, particular options. I think it was uh, is it grep-x was one of the strange ones that grep supports and BusyBox grep just can't do. Um, so that's the, those kinds of things then need to sort of spread out through a whole range of other packages. So when you start looking at that problem, you, you, the number of packages you're having to cross-build and maintain cross-builds of suddenly goes up exponentially. Um, equally with, with taking out Perl, it's a very good idea. It does uh, shrink the, the crush uh, installation by a lot. Um, so it takes out a huge chunk. Um, but again, there are maintainer scripts that expect some kind of Perl behavior. You have to try and re-implement or make certain um, scripts, no-ups. All that kind of work was done for MDebian Crush against Lenny. Uh, a lot of package changes have gone through by then, so we need to really ask the community, do you want to have uh, that level of work applied? Do you need to get below, say, 32 megabytes for a Debian install? And ask the community as, uh, at large, if we take out that level of uh, support, is it still Debian? Um, are, you are you looking at actually changing the, the nature of the distributions uh, in, in that way? So <clears throat> can you give us some examples of the sizes that you were able to get grip and crush down to uh, with ARM? And um, you know, maybe what it, something like a, a radical replacement using BusyBox would might get down to, oh, you've got numbers there, great. Right, there we go. So, and we got, yeah, 
minimal installation of Debian Crush, as we, as we had it for Lenny, got to about 24 megabytes without X. And we pushed it to about 38, I think I got it down to on the Balloon 3 board with um, X actually running. Um, I think it was about 38 or 40 odd meg by the time we finished. We were, there was someone very disappointed we couldn't fit on this 32 megabyte uh, compact flash card. Um, but we couldn't actually do that. We couldn't get X that low, even, even taken out to Core Utils and Pearl and put it in BusyBox. <coughs> It is true that an awful lot of other things have happened in the time since yes. then. Um, you know, the, the work that Intel and others have done on Yocto and tools like that and the amount of attention they're getting uh, does mean that when you get to systems that are that small and you're having to perform that amount of surgery and are changing that many of the sort of basic expectations people have about what is there if you call it a, a Debian or a Debian derivative exactly. system. Then yep. You know, I, I I would I would really encourage, um, you know, if 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 my opinion is someone who doesn't currently use any of uh, Grip or Crush or any of the other pieces is relevant at all, I would really encourage you to stay focused on Grip because I think that's the place where um, the potential for for having something that feels almost as good as Debian but is just you know missing some of the fat around the edges is potentially really valuable. And on some of these other things, if it's really a lot of work like that, there are a lot of other ways to build small systems these days. Yeah, yeah thanks. That's, 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 that's useful feedback because you know, we, we need to think about these kinds of things and how much work we set ourselves up to do. Uh, the one thing that occurs to me since Lenny is a lot of this G-object introspection stuff has come through. Uh, that's really complicated, the dependency chains uh, for all the, all of those packages, all the clutter stuff, all the uh, the GIR packages, trying to w work out a new path through those dependencies to get down to the, si the, the kind of sizes we had to crush. We need to we need to work out is it is it worth doing? Yeah, to be honest, I'd have to echo Redale. I mean, Grip sounds very very awesome for not zero effort, but much reduced effort. Um, I can see a really, really good use case for it already. Um, Debian Live with grip, you know, reduce yep. the memory footprint, get more on the CD. Well, exactly. We, you know, people just testing Debian, frankly, yeah. they're not gonna care about the copyrights no. and things. Um, I don't know how much Debian Live relies on the, um, the content being put up, being translated. That might be a, uh, an issue. Uh, because we do remove all the translations as well as all the man pages. So in live, yeah, we might have to um, uh, look at exactly what's happening with that. But yeah, there are lots of other situations where you, uh, you don't need the, the extra stuff that's in these Debian packages. I just wanted to say that the copyrights are kept, because yeah. otherwise it's violating, violating the they are, they are compressed with gzip9, but they are retained, yeah. So yes, of course. Can we have a half grip with the translations kept? <laughs> um, that's, that's something you've asked me for a long time ago when I was still thinking of doing TDEBs. Um, the, there are problems with, with that, mainly down to how the, um, the translation workflow would need to work with the rest of Debian. So that's a different issue. But yes, there was this, always this idea that you could, again, cherry pick which packages and which languages you brought in the translations for. So in Debian at the moment, one of my packages, uh, Drivel, it's got 34 different translations, and they're all 30 kilobytes. Uh, and you, you can't think of a single system out there that would have all 34 locales in use by a user. So why are we bundling the entire uh, wrap of an extra two or three megabytes to the, to the download? Um, of, of translation files and then translation pages as well. So, yeah, so uh, as we all observe, there's a lot more storage available these days, and yeah. we don't really care about tiny images anymore, just sort of not ridiculous images. Yeah. Um, but on the other hand, we do also make initrid images out of stuff. We're making stored images and we make live CD images, and there's all these sort of somewhat reduced, and we have machines that still don't have enough memory. 
So we do have various aspects of reducedness that are usefully targetable. Yeah. Um, and I think the most useful work we've done by a long way is stuff that ends up actually in Debian properly. And it, so it, it's, it's working on often mechanism rather than necessarily yeah. distro yeah. to make stuff possible. Uh, you know, and I'm not quite sure how our magic in it foo works, and maybe we should look at... So that seems to me to be the only case for a uh, busy box based something that might be called Debian. Uh, that's the only one I can think of. Mm. Uh, and that's quite a small targeted set of packages. So there's a, a fairly small amount of stuff that you would have to make work and say, yes. these things are small and ought to work uh, yeah. on busy box as well. What I'd like to do... Because we already uh, do it, in fact. Yes. We just do it with some jiggery pokery and hackery yeah. in the init ramps yeah. packages. Yeah. Maybe we should do something a bit more structured. I don't know. What, what I'd like to do with Crush when we get to that point is think about not um, preparing a suite that is one entire distribution, but it's actually a collection of modified packages, critical little points within the, the dependency chain. And you can superimpose that on your other package selections from Grip. And you can just trim out big areas so that you can make it easy to drop LDAP from a huge uh, um, a range of things, but also to be able to do exactly that, to have different versions of BusyBox Crush in a, an archive and just pick that one according to its functionality, according to what you, what you want to do with it. You don't have to take, uh, we don't try and build an expectation, we're building an entire single package set, but we're actually building components that you can rearrange yourselves. Time's nearly up. Are there any other questions? Wookie? Yeah, uh, the question was when the integration, integration is going to be ready. I was hoping uh, to get a lot of this work into easy. It, it, it became too late. Uh, there's a lot of stuff to do in DAC. There's a lot of stuff to actually, there was a big change had to go in how we actually process GRIP in the first place to get the new mechanisms working on a DSA host and using a local mirror and all these kinds of things that we had to do. So. The ideas came up at DebConf last year. It was January, February before the packages really started to move through that new mechanism. Um, so yeah, we've missed Wheezy, but certainly I can't see any reason why. We still got the support of the FTP team. We still got the support of the release team and, the, and WannaBuild and the other core teams in, in, in Debian. So there's no good reason why this won't make Wheezy plus one. I can't see anything blocking it at, at that point. So effectively, we'll carry on with our sort of semi-unofficial wheezy grip. Yes, version. I'll, that will that yeah. exists because it's basically turning yes. through. I'll, I will be making a wheezy grip release alongside wheezy uh, at the end of this freeze uh, cycle. Yeah, it's it's more difficult than it would have been um, with either of the two mechanisms, either the fully integrated one or the one we had before we started the integration. But it it is possible to do, and it will it will happen. Thank you very much, Neil. Thanks.